You're watching the U.S. American Made Guitars Show, brought to you by usedpedals.com and Willgard Productions. Visit willgardproductions.com for all your audio production needs. Without further delay, here's your host from Chester, Montana, USA, Gary Housley. Hey everybody, this is Gary Housley with usamericanmadeguitars.com. How's everybody doing today? I've got a really special guest on uh, Skype with me today, Angel Hall of Guitar Pickwear. Angel, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Gary. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's my, oh, pleasure. It's my pleasure. You know, nothing was going to stop me. Um, not even a broken neck. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, I got just a little bit of echo, but... Um, the audio sounds good, so we'll just get started here. It doesn't sound too bad. And uh, Angel, where are you from? I am actually from Kansas City area, so been here a long time. Lived a few other places in between, but I'm actually from Kansas City. Well, that's great. I've been to Kansas City before myself. It's a nice place. It reminds me of Oklahoma City, actually, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it kind of does. Really yeah. cosmopolitan. It's a tech city now. It's becoming one quickly. Well, that's good. And, and how long have you been creating this amazing guitar pickwear? Oh, I've been doing guitar pick wear, actually making guitar pick necklaces since 1981, which by the math, yes, I was like in sixth grade when I started doing this. Sixth grade. That's that's uh, pretty early on. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> no, I was 12. Do you enjoy it? I do. I do. I absolutely love it. And it's um, it got started when uh, my parents had s uh, split apart and uh, I lived with my mom part time, lived with my dad a little bit. And I swiped some picks out of my dad's gu guitar case and I wanted something to remember him by. So I poked a hole in it and put it on a chain and wore it to school. And the kids loved it. My friends asked me if I'd make one for them. Next thing you know, I had teachers asking me if I'd make one for them too. And it just kind of snowballed. So I started making guitar pick jewelry to pay for my lunch money, basically. So I didn't um, uh, have a whole lot of money back then. So I needed lunch. Who doesn't like food, right? And yeah. so I started making necklaces to pay for my lunch money and uh, skating fees. You know, you want to go roller skating, you got to pay for it. So uh, that's how I started uh, guitar pick wear. And I told my dad about it some years later, and he just laughed. He wondered where the picks were all disappearing to. He knew he wasn't that forgetful. Uh, little did he know his kid was the klepto, thinking that they were just it, it obviously laying around for fun. And obviously, if he didn't need them, they wouldn't be laying around, right? Um, <laughs> so I uh, was swiping those picks and making jewelry for my friends with them until I got got a little older. Uh, then I learned how to make glass beads on my own, and I told Dad that I was going to put his pick on a necklace with my very first set of beads that I was actually proud of, uh, ones that didn't turn out horrible. Uh, and he said, okay, you know, that I'd like to see that, and he did. And so uh, his necklace or his pick is on the necklace I have on today. Well, that's awesome. I've actually seen that necklace. I forgot that I can't – I don't have you on video, so I can't show the audience, but – She's got this really cool necklace on with a, a guitar pick in the center that was her father's. And that's kind of what got her started, the father's guitar picks. And she found out that, you know, hey, I can, I can make some lunch money here. Mm -hmm. And that started her off since 1981, and you've been going strong ever since. How are you doing? How's it working? It, it works great. I absolutely love what I do. Um, Dad has been instrumental in helping me build the business, um, build the tooling. I can now do mass quantity. I have uh, outside vendors, also American, that will print on the guitar picks for me so I can do mass quantity. Uh, I do a lot of them for weddings, parties, um, keychains, uh, company gifts, you name it. So there's, there's all kinds of fun things you can do with the guitar pick jewelry. That's really cool. And if somebody wanted to order multiple pieces from you, do you do multiple pieces, uh, you know, big runs? I absolutely do. I can do thousands or singles. I can scale. So it's it, mostly thanks to dad. My father was an inventor and a machinist. Uh, he was a very brilliant man. And he also played guitar. And he, he was more of a Chet Atkins kind of um, finger pick style. I uh, loved it, and I loved to listen to him as a kid. I miss hearing him now. Unfortunately, Dad passed away in 2008. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, um, uh, I, I feel you. My mom passed away in 2009, so that's pretty close. So, <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I, I feel you on that, but miss them every day. But the, yeah, I mean, but the guitar pick wear is kind of his legacy. And when I started building the necklaces and doing the neck pieces, uh, people would ask me, "Do you do custom? Do you do custom?" I said, "Yeah, absolutely." And then I had one woman who asked me to make one for her son who was killed in a car accident, and she said, "If I send you his pick, I want something of him." that helps me remember him every day. And I said, absolutely, I'd be honored. I, in fact, at first I was a little nervous because I, you know, I had to tell her, you know, I'm gonna put a hole in the pick, right? And, and she said, I totally understand. I don't want it to come off, so that's absolutely fine. I just want something of my son near my heart. So we designed something that was his birthstone, his favorite color, his school colors mixed in there. It was just everything about her son. And so I got to talking with her and we absolutely bonded. In fact, we still talk today. And she loves that necklace still to this day. I've only had to fix it once. <laughs> I had to fix it one time. The dog accidentally pulled it off her neck. Uh, but other than that, she still wears it. And she says it's her favorite thing. Like she has pearls, she has diamonds, she has expensive you know, jewelry, but her son's guitar pick is what means the most to her. And so when she's not wearing it, she has a special cabinet for it that she keeps it in. So that that absolutely made me feel, you know, like a, like a million bucks. I can't even begin to describe what an honor it is to make a piece like that for someone. You know, that's really special. Um, you know, considering what had happened and and everything. You know, she had she finally had something. You know, that she could have close to her heart. And that mu that must have meant a whole lot to her. It, it absolutely did, and it meant a lot to me too. And then I realized, you know, that this is not uh, a one-time request. I had been asked to build you know neck pieces for people all the time and it's usually like a wedding or a boyfriend girlfriend or this was our first concert and then i started getting requests shortly after i opened the website if i would make custom neck pieces with pics that people caught at concerts you know like when the, the star of the show will throw pics out to the crowd and they caught one and they would want to remember that magical night that was the night they saw you know this band with whomever they were with and i thought you know that's absolutely cool i'm totally down with that so i just talk with them a little bit get to know them and you know tell me about the night tell me about the show what were you feeling and and we work on some words that kind of translate to colors that translate to patterns and so the beads actually reflect more of emotional of what they were feeling that night or sometimes they'll just tell me as simple as i just want these colors and i just want it to go with all my outfits that's fine too but uh, either way it, it's a lot of fun because no two are generally alike most every piece i do is a one of a kind yeah that's really good and you know uh, speaking of pieces um right now i've got an image up of a couple of taylor guitar uh earrings <laughs> and they're, they're really cool, you know. They're they're green and kind of got that marble look to them. And mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's an American company. They make American made guitars. It's just awesome to see that, you know. And uh, when I went to your website, that was right out front there. So it was really good to see Taylor Guitars on uh, on the picks there. That's pretty neat. I absolutely love it. I love to, and I, and I'm kind of big on that. Like I try to buy American components when I can. Um, if I can make them myself, I will. I'll always opt for that over anything else. Uh, but I, when I have the picks printed, like if I do the custom mass run picks, I absolutely try to source those out to an American company every time. That's awesome that you do that. You know, we got a couple of people in the um, chat room that want to say hi. I'm just going to uh, give them some recognition. Sinner, who's uh, an awesome guy. He um, he watches my show. You know, he's just simply awesome. Love the guy. He, he's in a lot of the other chat rooms. Very knowledgeable. He's got some badass guitars. This guy's cool. He's really cool. So it's great to see you, Sinner, uh, in the chat room today with Monica. Hi, Monica. Uh, Monica is in there because, um, well... She's a lady and she likes jewelry. Yay! So she's in there and she says um, the audio sounds good. And she also says that, um, oh, what a sweet story. You know, the one that you told about the mother and the son. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, thank you. Thank you, Monica. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you, Monica. And so uh, what I'm going to do is just transition here into some of your pieces. Um, let's start out with earrings. Mm -hmm. Um, now I've got three sets of earrings. They're all Taylor. 
but it really gives you an idea of of uh, what you can do with these. You know, different colors can match different clothing if you're into matching. You know, <laughs> so you've got different colors to choose from, and there's different things that you do with the top parts of the earrings to to you know pretty them up. Mm-hmm. So um, when it when it comes to earrings, you know, if somebody you know, had some special picks or something like that, and they wanted you to use those. Do you have a problem people sending you some picks? Not at all. In fact, the uh, P.O. box is right on the website at guitarpickwear.com, and I check that box pretty frequently. Um, if you drop me an email, let me know something's coming. That's totally fine. Uh, it is not uncommon to go to the box and get a few picks or several orders, uh, usually from a bunch of friends, that all want to have matching ones or something, and that's fine too. Uh, But yeah, they they can absolutely send them to me. And what I do is I make a mock-up and I take pictures of the beadwork uh, and just kind of give them numbers. And you just let me know which mock-up you like. Or if none of them work, that's okay. We'll keep trying. I'll keep trying until we find just the right mix of exactly what you want. That's pretty cool. Uh, I really dig the earrings. And uh, uh, I mean, I might even get me one. uh, (laughs) put in my ear i don't know so they they're just cool looking and when i see that taylor guitar on there i immediately gravitate toward it It looks like a fishing lure to me oh yeah the fish hook the french hook uh type uh, earring hook yes i try to go for lightweight so that it doesn't weigh the ear down and tear a hole uh in the in the body but also i want to use components that don't bother the skin I know some folks tell me that they they can't wear gold, they can't wear silver. It's usually polishing agents that are on those metals that cause reactions. Um, I will use sterling silver if I can, but if if not, if they can't wear it, that's okay. Hypo, hypoallergenic, which is the same as surgical steel, usually works just great and doesn't cause people some problems. So I will use that as well. Excellent, excellent. I was just checking back over into the... Uh into the uh chat room and monica says you're welcome angel (laughs) and uh sinner also said great story so he really enjoyed your story as well ah thank you oh i've got tons i've got tons i've got lots of emails from folks that um you know wanted to capture a special day or a special person that meant a lot to them and we will do things like uh, use their initial, like I'll find charms. Maybe it's that person's initial. Maybe the pick is really worn and the name of the brand of the pick is worn off. That's okay. We can add a little charm to dangle at the end of it or an overlay on top of it. Uh, something that just m- means a lot to that individual to remember that person by. So the memorial jewelry part is a, is a big thing to me because of dad, because I told him what I was doing and he absolutely loved that as well. Um, and, and enough to help me get tooling and everything set up to drill all the holes in the picks and such, which I appreciate that. So thanks, Dad, as I'm looking up at the sky. Uh, <laughs> he loved what I was doing with the picks and just thought that was really, really fun and a good way to be creative. But, you know, I told him, I said, this is more than that. I can tell you so many friends and people I've met over the years and I still talk to them and, and they'll order more. You know, they'll say, this was my dad. This was my uncle. This was my brother. This was my daughter. Uh, This one's for a friend. This is for someone who I know uh, who recently passed away and they liked guitars or they played guitars or they liked this band. And, uh, you know, what can you do for me? So, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing and it's a wonderful thing to hear their stories. I would love someday to maybe write a book. <laughs> I'd have to contact a lot of people and get permissions, I guess, but write a book about all the wonderful pieces that were made um, from from their feedback, from them sharing about that person that we were designing that neck piece for. Amazing. And speaking about neck pieces, <clears throat> let's check out a few of these necklaces here. This kind of shows um, off what you do, like, for instance, the Fender Heavy Pick on the left Mm -hmm. Um, vintage ball chain and choose your pick, you know, Mm -hmm. so you can choose whatever. That's just your traditional. That's kind of like something I would wear. I would think. (laughs) That's what started it all. That's exactly what I did when I was 12 years old and then sixth grade. So I just threw dad's pick on a chain and that's exactly what it was. There you go. And that's, that's me, right? That's as fancy as I want to get. So, uh, and then in the middle picture, I have a really cool looking pick. It looks metal, like it's beat up or something. And it's on an intricate, you know, triple chain. It's really sweet, man. Tell me about that. What, I mean, where did that pick come from? 
That is a tech pick. That's what it's called. It's called Tech Pick USA. I absolutely love those picks. It's a hammered texture. It's like an aluminum type metal, I think. I don't know that it's aluminum, but it's really lightweight. I absolutely love it. Um, if you strum on a guitar with it, it sounds so strange. It's just so cool. I know uh, some speed metal guys like the tech picks. I just saw that and said, oh, this is just too delicious not to play with. So I will find really unique picks like that and make things with it. Um, my favorite of all time, though, is Pick Boy. Uh, Pick Boy is no longer made. I wish they did. And whoever has Pick Boy, you have a request right here. Angel would love it if you'd continue to make more. Uh, because Pick Boy had the coolest designs and patterns on their picks that were not like anything else. Those were kind of geared for more collectors, guitar pick collectors. And there are tons of them out there that some people do stamps, coins, Pez dispensers, you name it. Uh, but there are guitar pick collectors that like really cool photos on picks. So I kind of got into that a little bit and uh, had some guitar pick wear ones printed that were limited edition. But that tech pick kind of got me started into more of the, uh, you know, what other unusual picks are there out there? And there's some that already have the Starburst hole already made into it. There's Delrin and there's Dunlop. They have the cute little turtle on there. Uh, so it's really fun just to kind of think of these picks, not just as a utilitarian device for playing your instruments, but you can wear them. And they make a really neat jewelry component. And they're a lot of fun. Absolutely, and uh, uh, the uh, one on the right side there is a Fender Medium, and it's a light-colored pick on a kind of like a gunmetal type bead arrangement, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word, since I'm not uh, a, a bead ma uh, master like yourself. That's uh, <laughs> uh, how I can describe it. <laughs> but uh, it, it's uh, really cool, and, and I would wear something like that too. I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I, I could see any guy wearing that. Cool. So you've Yay, got, I love that. <laughs> yeah, you've got stuff that is uh, for good for male or female. I try. I try. I tend to um, go smaller because I'm always thinking light. Nobody wants to wear heavy. And then I'll have guys tell me, yeah, I really want something a little heavier than that. <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay. That's okay if they tell me, you know, Angel, let's try again. I want something a little heavier. That's he good. We yeah, a heavy, heavy necklace is great. But mm -hmm. little ball chain, that, it's all good. It's all good. Mm -hmm. It is all good. And yeah. that one on the bottom is Night and Day Sterling Classic with the white uh, Fender Medium. Those are all hematite, hematite and sterling silver beads on that one. So those are natural stone. So not everything is necessarily glass or plastic beads. I tend to stay away from plastic beads if I can. I like to use natural stones mostly because of weight. You know, guitar picks are really lightweight. And when they're too light, they tend to end up around the back of your neck when you wear it or they move around. So I like to weight them down as much as I can. Nice. That's good. Good forethought there. You've been doing this for a long time, so I'm sure you figured out all the ins and outs of this game. Well, I don't know. I'd like to say I have, but then I learn something new almost every day. Some kind of new bead, new technique, new stringing. Um, my sister, Kathy, and I, I'm sorry she wasn't able to be with us today. She actually went back to Colorado. So hi, Kat. Um, Kathy is my my new inspiration she's like how about adding guitar picks into other things besides jewelry and i'm like you know i've been talking about it for years and she's like why not try to do like headbands and and more garments more accessories so with kathy's help we're gonna start um kind of unveiling this is the top secret i'm unveiling here guitar pick wear is actually going to start doing more wearable type items not just jewelry so we hope to do like handbags skirts dresses tops um, even guys shirts like being able to add a pick somehow into a shirt or into a wristband or cuff something more uh, for both male and female right on you know and, and that's your business to innovate and to uh, come up with fresh ideas and new things and you know that's what uh, being an American is all about you know I mean the, comp <laughs> the competition's out there but it drives innovation it is, and it helps that I have a wonderfully musically inclined family. Uh, my mom used to sing in my dad's band when they were teenagers, and my brother plays guitar. So, hey, Matt, I know he's listening out there today. Uh, and he often, actually, this was kind of funny because a lot of folks would ask me, well, how are you using some of these picks that you have? And I'm like, well, I'm not doing anything to the picks, and a lot of them are stage used. 
staged use meaning Matt probably used them and I, <laughs> I took his pick. Sometimes they're new. I've gotten away from the used picks, but if they were stage use, I would say what artists actually use the pick. Um, steered away from that a little bit. Uh, celebrities were kind of probably getting tired of me hounding them for picks. Uh, no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> most of them were really, really nice about it. But uh, yes, thanks to Matt. He, he helped steer me in some of the guidance on picks and thicknesses and types, you know, the celluloids and the delrins and the plastics. So that was really good. And of course, Kathy, she's, uh, sh she is so awesome to have around because she, she likes music. She loves music. She loves to go to concerts, but she also is really good with books. So she is my accountant type that helps steer me in the right direction when I need it. Absolutely love it. So if I didn't have such a wonderful family to support me in all of this and my son, Logan, as well, um, yeah, I don't know where I would be. So it's kind of all of us. It's, it's a family thing. Yeah, that's awesome. And, um, you know, uh, I have a picture up now of a very beautiful piece and it's kind of it, it. It looks like chain mail, you know, like, mm -hmm. and it's got like teardrops, uh, beads on the bottom of it, and in the center it has this uh, beautiful black guitar pick with a uh, abalone uh, shell type inlay of a cross. Yes, that's gothic ruffle. That one was just me having fun. I had some chain. I didn't have. Um, I had enough to do, obviously, a necklace and some extra. So I had the, the chain cut up for the necklace, but the extra was enough, and then I would have been short. So I'm like, well, let's play with this. What can we do with this? So I took the segments and divided it up into tiers, basically, to make like a little ruffle. And uh, I just thought it was just kind of fun to play with chain that way and just add more chain and weight to a piece. Uh, that was kind of trendy. I think it still is. I like that piece a lot. Um, the cross is a pick boy pick. So now you can totally see why I uh -huh. <laughs> that is a pick boy piece love it the beads are actually red it's a deep blood red with uh iridized on them to give them a, a rainbow sheen so as you wear it all of those chain fringes basically they kind of shimmer and shake it's just it's neat and so when you're out there on the floor of a concert totally rocking out just don't hit yourself in the face with it that's all i ask mm -hmm. but <laughs> but have a good time because it's really really pretty very sparkly piece it is. It's great. And, uh, you know, people that play guitar or musician or, you know, anything like that would see that and just, you know, love it. So that's really <laughs> cool. I, I think I think that's a great piece. So I included that picture. And also, I've got this really – this thing's freaking cool, man, because I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. Oh, yes. Yeah, and you captured that whole red and blue, you know, Spider-Man feel – with this necklace. I mean, it kind of looks like a spider. It it has the Spider-Man uh, Marvel Comics guitar pick in the center. Thank yeah, you. I really love it. What a beautiful piece, man. I'm a huge fan of Spider-Man. So that, that kicks ass right there. Thank you. Thank you. I absolutely loved those picks. And I forget the company. It escapes me right now. Of course it would right when I'm on, on with you today. But it uh, they had they have a series of various bands. And like they have John Bon Jovi. They have Pink Floyd. They have The Doors. They have The Beatles. And then they had some of these comic book series ones. And I'm like, I'm going to buy a set of those just to see what, what I can do with it. And I had these coral. Those are actual coral chip beads and hematites and glass on on that neck piece and i just wanted to have fun and do something a little tribal a little um i don't know just something a little more more masculine a little more tribal add some of those blue uh, drop beads on there and i love that and it was a perfect match to the reds that are in the pick to the coral because they do vary slightly with the coloring on coral but yes that one's spider-man origins still have that piece as well um it is really fun it's a neat piece it it's a heavier one so it's going to have some nice weight to it so it's going to stay on your neck appropriately uh but yes thank you that was <laughs> that was just fun to explore and to make those little you know tassels and it looks kind of like a spider web which i thought was fun yeah it's kind of it's got a spidery feel and look to it it's just you nailed it <laughs> thank you thank you yeah that's awesome so um what are your uh, future plans uh, other than making the wearables or is that that's pretty much the future plan that you have? 
that is part of it um and of course i also do um painting and, and such I, I mean as an artist sometimes you can't just get focused into one medium and i'll often do other mediums uh, so i thought you know is there a way to incorporate pics into canvas somehow and actually there is i have a friend on twitter who is guitar pick art and she's actually not too far away from me uh, she actually cuts up guitar picks and does mosaics with them on canvas which is absolutely stunning um, and i thought wow that's that's so cool she's actually cutting edge there and I'm hoping to maybe do something like that in the future. And I don't know if I want to get into full mosaics with pics. I don't want to copy what she does, but I just love it that she's pioneering that technique. And so maybe, maybe we'll make that a thing. That would be a good thing to have. <laughs> <laughs> have a good genre, guitar pick genre, like painting, acrylic, mixed media, guitar pick. Yeah. There you go. Mixed like media. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I love it a lot. I would say that um, probably other areas to conquer is uh, probably getting off of just guitarpickware.com website a little bit. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me, like, why aren't you selling on other sites like Pinterest and Etsy and things? And I'm like, you know, I, I never really thought about doing it because I already have my own domain. I already have my own website. But um, Kathy and, and I talked about it, and maybe it probably would be a good idea, possibly for the wearables to expand onto other domains. So we'll see how that goes and just kind of give it a feel. Um, but yeah, I mean, to, to actually get into some of that and, and explore other avenues of getting the picks out there um, and getting more of the mass quantity out there because it's an awful lot of fun and it's just beautiful to see them because usually if somebody's wearing a pick, first thing they're gonna ask is, do you play guitar? And the sad thing is when they ask me that, I say no. <laughs> I don't actually play guitar, and I know everyone's like, what, what, what? you don't play guitar? <laughs> um, no, I don't play guitar. I am a piano gal of the family. So dad was a guitar player. My brother Matt's the guitar player. But I play keyboards um, and hammer dulcimer and glass flute. <laughs> so I have some other diversified instruments that I'm into. But um, usually when you can strike up a conversation with someone, I say, well, what kind of guitar do you play? What are you into? You know, have a Fender? Do you have a Martin? How about a Taylor? And I, yeah, I can talk guitar with folks and I'm happy to do that anytime. I love a nice, uh, you know, sunburst finish. We can talk Koa tops, you bet. Uh, <laughs> we can talk all about it and tuners, capos, you name it. But it is, it is one of those things I haven't done yet. So if I were going to do something new, uh, maybe it's time I actually learn how to play this divine instrument that I've loved for so long. Yeah, maybe yeah. give it a shot, you know. Yeah. Uh, you might you might decide you like it more than anything else. Exactly, exactly. It's not that hard. I, I'm just going to tell you. The, the regular major chords is what you want to start with mm -hmm. and learning how to tune. If you if you learn how to tune and just learn A, B, C, D, E, F, G, man, mm -hmm. you, you've already conquered a lot of mileage there. <laughs> I think I told my brother the time I learned my first two chords, I said, I'm two-thirds of the way to rock stardom. Yeah, mm. so... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. We'll yeah. see. But yeah. it's, it takes practice and it takes time. So usually I'm busy making pieces for somebody, but uh, I, I hope to free up some time and, and make that happen. Because I think for, for dad, uh, I'd like to do that. Definitely. For sure. Do you listen to music while you work? I do. I do. And it's so funny because if, if anyone were to ask, like, what's your favorite? If I told them, they would be like, no way. Um, but my favorite music of all time is actually choir music. I know, don't hit me, don't hit me. Uh, but, <laughs> but it is. I like uh, to sing along when I'm working, but I have such a diverse taste in music. So it's whatever mood of the moment. And sometimes it's Green Day. Sometimes it's Pink Floyd. Sometimes it's Rolling Stone. Sometimes it's Little Credence. Sometimes it's Cyndi Lauper. Sometimes it's Taylor Swift. Sometimes it's Garth Brooks. Sometimes it's, you know, speed metal. Uh, I have a, a local band that I dearly love called Ancient Creation. I love them. Um, and sometimes it's John Mayer. And it's, you know, Hootie and the Blowfish or Matchbox 20. So just diverse, as crazy as you can get out. But I just love music. I love all kinds of music. It takes a lot of guts and talent to stand up in front of one or a hundred or a thousand or a hundred thousand people and get their attention and have them singing along with you. And I absolutely appreciate that. I appreciate 
what they do and and how they do it and how they make uh, people happy, even for just an hour or two hours. It's it's just incredible. So I love to listen to all kinds of things. So so any of you out there that are listening and want to say, hey, Angel, listen to my band. Yes, please send it to me. I love that. I love to listen to it in the studio and I love to listen to new bands and new artists all the time. Well, there you have it, folks. You can you can, And what was the name of that speed metal band you liked again? Ancient Creation. Ancient, Ancient Creation. Creation. I have to check yes. those guys out. <laughs> <laughs> they are wicked fast. Um, Peter Nisinger, I actually worked with him uh, once at a day job that we had. We shared at the same company. And he is classically trained, but he absolutely kills it on guitar. It is just amazing to hear him. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing here? And he goes, I hear that a lot. <laughs> so as most artists do right they they often hear you know wow what are you doing here you should be on stage somewhere and they do i mean they do they play locally but wow i just absolutely love that band love their sound and yeah like i said it's just a diverse mix of music all the way around absolutely like it right right and do you um i was gonna say you have a necklace that is really special because of its autographs could you tell me about that yeah yeah i do i um i have sometimes cornered artists <laughs> at, <laughs> at shows and one once upon a time many many months ago i was an aware records rep so i was an aware rep and aware was a i guess a sub label of columbia records and I was working with them and about the days of a little unknown person john mayer <laughs> so I actually can say I knew John Mayer before he had all his tattoos. Uh, but he uh, was opening for Nora Jones at uh, Soil Dove in Dallas, Texas. And I had him sign a pick for me and actually he signed a bunch of CDs. And he says, you're going to sell these on eBay. I said, no, I'm going to give them away as Christmas gifts. I did give them away as Christmas gifts. But it wasn't uncommon for me to bump into artists and bands and things and ask them to sign picks and I would sell them, donate the proceeds to charity. Uh, there's one necklace I do have that I kept because this one was quite a collection. This was the band Sticks. And I had each of the band members sign a white pick uh, with Sharpie. And uh, I have Tommy Shaw, James Young, Glenn Burtnick, Lawrence Gowan, and Todd Sukerman all on a necklace. And it's kind of that, um, like a tribal type thing where it's like extended away from the neck piece part but each of the segments of the neck piece is closed circuit wire work technique which is basically where you um, interlock silver wire in with beads and you interlock it into itself so it becomes a chain it's pretty much unbreakable you'd have to cut it to basically get it apart uh, but it's got lapis and crystal uh, Swarovski crystals in it and each of those picks were autographed by the band members themselves. So it's kind of my pride and joy. Um, I've never made another piece like it. I don't know that I could get another one again, <laughs> but, but I can say that it's held up really well over the years. So I actually probably did that piece in, wow, it would have been maybe 95, 97, somewhere in that time frame. So it was late 90s, early 2000s possibly, when I started getting signatures and just every time I'd see one of them at a show, see if I could get another signature and add it to my collection until I had a whole set to make a necklace with. And I've actually seen this necklace myself, and it's really awesome. And I just don't see how you can make another one. I mean, it's one of a kind. It It is what it is, and it's hard enough to get an autograph from one of those guys, much less every single guy in the band on a guitar pick. Indi you know, individual guitar picks. You got five guitar picks on that mm -hmm. necklace, you know. I mean, and every one of them is individually signed. It's it's absolutely stunning to, to see and realize that, you know, that was the band Sticks. You know, yep. Tom, Tommy Shaw is right dead – middle center yep and his uh, his printed picks his actual sign like the printed ones that you would get from the concerts uh his signature looks that just like that i mean <laughs> like that he really does sign that way uh but yes and i do love that piece it was a wonderful time in my life i met some wonderful friends through sticks chat and we would often meet up at concerts all over the country and see each other and it was funny because back then the internet wasn't filled with so many strange individuals 
individuals. So we'll just leave it like that. But this this group was obviously in a common interest of the band Sticks. And even though we'd get on there and we'd talk about our kids, talk about our jobs, talk about our cars, talk about our musical interests, uh, we had that common interest of the band. And we were like an online family. And we would meet up at various concerts all over the country and see each other in real life. And that was always a treat. And so to uh, they knew, I mean, the band obviously knew us because we were part of a, 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 a dedicated fan website, I guess. And they knew about us, and we would see them sometimes after after the show um, backstage, um, and I would get the signatures then, but I never wanted to intrude, so I, I would always be real courteous to let others go ahead and get signatures first, because they, they would be there one night. I'd probably see these guys next weekend in St. Louis or somewhere, <laughs> somewhere else, so it was not that big of a thing. But it was fun to, to collect those over time. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Angel Hall from guitarpickwear.com. You want to give her a shout on her Twitter page. That's where she's most active socially. And I believe that is uh, at guitarpickwear, right? It is. It is. Come say hi to me. So I've got to post pictures of some of these pieces so you guys can see them. There you go. Um, And um, I'll have this interview up for later playback. So I'd like to thank you, Angel Hall, for being my guest today. It was very interesting to get to know you and and the jewelry that you create. I think it's amazing. You're an amazing person, and the stories you told were amazing. So I'm really glad that I uh, did the unusual thing and put someone on here that doesn't even play guitar. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, but I got I got to come to your defense, though. Um, huh? Before we get off here, I gotta let people know she does have a American Fender and an American Harmony guitar, so yes, she's she's cool. <laughs> I guess I do, and I want to get an American Taylor or a Martin, even if if I can still find one, I would love to. So, <laughs> anyone out there, contact me. Let me know. Well, I believe if, if anybody can do anything, it's you. It seems like that when you set your mind to something. And you get it done. So I appreciate you and uh, and the spirit of your father and and um, the stories you told about him. What a special thing. So thank you for being on the show, Angel. Well, thank you so much, Gary. I absolutely loved it. This is Gary Housley with USAmericanMadeGuitars.com. And until next time, keep it rocking. Video production for the U.S. American Made Guitar Show by Gary Housley. U.S. American Made Guitars.com. Audio production by Wilgard Productions. Visit WilgardProductions.com for all your audio production needs. <laughs>